Welcome to I Can Do That. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about something we should have a long time ago, and that's hand saws. More importantly, how to use hand saws in your shop and how to do it safely and efficiently. We're not going to be talking about fancy, complicated joinery or fancy hand saws. We're really just talking about the nuts and bolts of sawing. So we'll introduce two different types of hand saws to you, talk about their tooth geometry, and then show you how to use them. But first, I want to make sure we thank our sponsors, Woodcraft and Tightbond. Woodcraft carries everything you need to make a woodworking project, including a wide array of hand saws. Tightbond is what we use in the shop anytime we're gluing something up, including the bench hook that we'll introduce to you later on in this program. Thanks, guys. Now back to the show. In the world of hand saws, there are two general categories. You have pull saws, which are also referred to as Japanese-style saws, and you have Western-style saws. Now, pull saws, as the name implies, cut on the pull, and a Western-style saw cuts on the push. Because of the way they're used, the blades on them have a few key differences that you should know about. Now, on a Western-style saw, uh, you probably have something like this either in your grandparents' garage or one, one hanging out in your parents' garage. Um, a Western style saw cuts on the push stroke. So as you're pushing, you can see that the blade will have a little bit of a tendency to flex. Because of that, Western style saws typically have a thicker blade to reduce the amount of flex. And thusly, they may take a little bit more power to use effectively. A Japanese style saw cuts on the pull stroke. And actually, as you're pulling, you can see that the blade has a tendency to tension itself. That means the blade can be a little bit thinner and more flexible. Conversely, it has a thinner kerf, and it's usually a little bit easier to use and get started with. If you've been having trouble using a Western-style saw, I'd recommend picking up a pull saw and giving that a try. It's the one I turn to most when I'm in my shop. So with both pull saws and Western-style saws, there are two different types of teeth geometry. There's what's called a rip saw, which you use when you're ripping wood, cutting with the grain of the wood, and a crosscut saw, which you're using when you're cutting across the grain and the fibers of the wood. Generally, a rip saw, the teeth will be larger and you'll have fewer of them on the blade. With a crosscut saw, you'll have more teeth and they'll be a little bit smaller. Um, that's also another reason why I really like pull saws. This pull saw here comes with rip teeth on one side of the blade and crosscut teeth on the other side of the blade. So it's really convenient to have one saw that does both things pretty well. Now there's a new type of saw that's come out in the last few years. Um, that's really more of a hybrid of a Western style saw and a Japanese style pull saw. Um, as you can see here, it's, it has a Western style grip, um, but the teeth are filed a little bit more like a pull saw. So it's a little bit easier to start in a cut. And this is the type of saw that I just keep in my car all the time because they're inexpensive and I can use them to quickly cross cut lumber to size when I'm at the lumber yard or home center. Um, and I'm not too worried about it getting banged up because it's, you know, usually 20 bucks or less. So now that we know a little bit about the different types of saws, let's make some cuts. So when I'm using hand saws at my bench, there's one thing I always use in addition to the hand saws, and that's a bench hook. You can see what a bench hook li looks like here. It's a thinner piece of wood with two fences on it, and it hooks over the side of the bench. Uh, if you've seen other bench hooks, you might notice that we've got a little bit more space in the front of our bench hook, um, and that's because we've designed this one to use with a pole style saw. So we're going to be making a cross cut on our piece of wood. We're going to be cutting across the grain of the wood. So we'll be using the smaller cross cut side of our pole saw. Another thing to keep in mind whenever you're using any hand tools, you want to make sure your hands are out of the direction of the cut. With a pole saw, there is a tendency because we're holding the piece in place with our hand um, for your thumb to potentially get into that way of travel. Just keep that in mind, make sure it doesn't happen. I'm using my body weight to keep the back of the hook against the bench and I'll be clamping the front in place with just my hand. Now when you're starting your cut uh, with your crosscut saw, there are a few things you should keep in mind. One is you want to keep the handle relatively parallel to the bench because they've designed the angle of the blade to cut most effectively at this shallower angle. Another thing to keep in mind when you're starting your cut is that the pressure should be very light. You don't want to put really any downward pressure. The teeth should do the job for you. And then finally, you can see I've got my finger pointed forward along the edge of the handle here. And that's uh, to help you cut a straight line because we want to be making 90 degree straight cuts with our hand tools. So I'll go ahead and get started on this cross cut. So I've got my body weight holding the bench hook in place. 
It's clamped against my fence with my hand. I'm just gonna lightly start my cut. And so I'm really just letting the teeth do the work here. If I start to put too much pressure on it, it'll start to bind, you can see, see there. So you really just want to let the, the teeth do the work. There's our cross cut. Now we're going to set up for a little bit of a rip cut here. Now I'm really never ripping full length boards to width. Um, I, I'll turn to my table saw or a circular saw to do that. But if I've got a piece that's too small uh, to rip safely with one of my power tools, or for instance if I'm cutting a notch or I don't have a power tool at hand, I will reach for my handsaw and make a rip cut. So I'm going to lay out a little bit of a notch here. Let's see, we'll come down about four inches right there. And then I'll make a line for my cross cut here too. And then I'm just going to clamp the board in place, making sure I've got the cut line hanging off the edge of the bench. And I'm actually putting both of my clamps on the back side of the board here because as I uh, rip with the pull saw, that pull is going to be pushing against these clamps. <clears throat> so next, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how you should be using your pull saw. So the angle of the blade when it contacts the wood is really important. If it's too high, um, you're going to get a lot of resistance and it'll be difficult to make your cut. So we want to come in and make sure we're nice and shallow on the angle. I've got my finger extended to help me keep my cut nice and straight. And then I'm going to use my thumb on the back side to support the blade as we make these first few cuts in our rip. Now again, I'm keeping the blade nice and nice and low. You can see as I start to start to come up, it gets harder to pull. So we want to keep it nice and low. And I'm also paying attention here to the back of my notch. So I'll go ahead and finish up this rip cut and cut out the notch there. So there I've got my notch done. And next I'm going to show you uh, how I like to use a western style push saw. So making a cut with a western style saw is very similar. You want to pay attention to how your hand is positioned, how much pressure you're putting on the cut, the angle of your blade as you're cutting, all that great stuff. The saw I reach for the most is this western style hybrid saw. This is the saw I keep in my car to cross cut boards to length at the lumber yard, uh, but I'll also use it for some cuts at my bench. You can see that the teeth are filed for a cross cut. It's a little bit more of a hybrid of a uh, pull saw and a push saw, you can see here from the teeth geometry. Now when I'm using the saw, again, I'm going to use my bench hook, uh, but this time I've got my piece behind the fence, so as I push against the hook, everything is held firmly in place. Now with the saw, I'm, I've got my finger extended here to help me keep my cut straight, and to start it, I actually like to do a couple of pull strokes to get my saw started in the kerf, and then I'll go to the push action. And again, I want to let the teeth do the work. I don't want to push too hard on things. You can also tell that these teeth are much more aggressive than the pull saw I was using. So 
So this was just a very quick overview of what handsaws can do for you in your workshop. If you want to dive deeper into the wonderful, crazy world of handsaws, we've got a lot of great articles on our website and some suggested links down below to get you started. Also, if you haven't picked up a pole saw before, I'd really recommend you giving one a try. That's it for I Can Do That, and we'll see you next time.